What's going on you guys, RBG here bringing you more coverage on Transformers Reactivate, the newly announced title that has a lot of people talking, not because it's the latest installment in the Transformers video gameography, but because it's a TF title that seems so out of the norm than what we've been accustomed to. If you ask me, the reveal trailer definitely lives up to that signature slogan. There's more than meets the eye when it comes to all the things shown in it, but we're gonna continue putting all the pieces together to give a better idea of what this game actually is. Now before we dive into today's topic, I ask that you guys give this video a thumbs up. Yeah, I know it's painful getting this question at the beginning of a video, but YouTube's algorithm encourages it, so if you rock with your boy and you know I'm gonna bring you that grade A content, then smash that like button. And if by any chance you make it to the end of the video and you weren't satisfied with it, then and by all means feel free to retract that like and give it a dislike. Just rate the video guys. But yeah, the gears have officially begun to turn for this newly revealed title and fans still don't know what to make of it. There's obviously a lot of things they're not accustomed to with it, such as this big alien threat that has undoubtedly taken the spotlight from both the Transformers and human races. Whenever any kind of Transformers media is announced, we usually have preconceived notions that the conflict will revolve around the Autobots and Decepticons, but this time around, their ongoing affairs is taking a back seat, and they're essentially joining forces with the humans to take on this major threat known as the Legion. Which is absolutely insane, because this enemy is unlike anything we've ever seen in Transformers. Like the closest thing I can compare them to is the Swarm from the Generation 2 comics. They were these parasitic entities that tried to devour the Autobots and Decepticons in order to sustain themselves, and the Legion seems to fit that status quo, because according to the leaks we got a while back, they're a nanomachine virus that has turned all of Earth's technology into these horrific zombies. Like I mentioned this in my last video, this game's title is pretty self-explanatory. The overtones consist of salvaging and repurposing Transformers to stop this deadly threat that's had a chokehold on the planet for quite a while. We're talking years where it's essentially been terraforming the Earth. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's developed this high-minded intelligence that seeks to overthrow the entire galaxy. Many have suspected that it comes from Unicron since he wields the ability to possess or reformat robots as his heralds. And I've had my theories on that as well. If that's the case, then I have a nagging suspicion that he'll be this high-level raid boss that you'll have to team up with other skilled players to defeat. If you don't know, this game will be a four-player online action game. Which, take it that what you will, I mean the game's first working title was Transformers Online before it went on to be labeled Rise and ultimately reactivate. I know there's been a major protest from fans who just want a single player story driven game with the option of having multiplayer, but this game won't have that in mind. When you see the name Splash Damage stamped onto any project, you should kind of already know that its central focus would be online co-op. They've been the go-to team when it comes to making different games function properly online. Like these guys are experienced and they go all the way back to when they were just modders that essentially fixed things professional developers got wrong in games like Quake 3 and Team Fortress. And that's a telltale sign that above all else, Transformers Reactivate will at least be a solid game when it comes to its online experience. But I'm really hoping that the devs go all in and deliver a great story that accompanies the gameplay. Anyways, as I mentioned earlier, the Evil Legion has most likely been ravaging what's left of Earth for years now, because we see the beginning of their assault and the aftermath of it. Something else to keep in mind is that the robot who's been looking at these things take place seems to have been offline for quite a while, because we see him reactivate to these strange humans that he's having a hard time identifying. Like at first, it comes off as if his memory core has been extremely damaged to the point to where he can't remember anything, but there's this moment where we see him scan the woman to the left and briefly mistake her for someone else. Thanks largely in part to talented TF fans such as Codename Vaded over on Twitter, we were able to get a translation of all the Cybertronian text littered throughout the trailer. And their translation suggests that the robot mistook this woman for Marissa Fairborn. Longtime Transformers fans may remember her from the G1 cartoons, where she served under a human-run military organization known as Earth Defense Command. Those particular aspects seem like they're gonna play a huge part in this game's story, because this mystery woman who's been mistaken for Marissa just may well be her her daughter or a distant relative of hers. It's almost as if her DNA or certain characteristics lined up with Marissa Fairborn's, but the robot scanner quickly deduced that it was someone else. Also, this human organization seems to be the latest rendition of Earth Defense Command, because if you read the translated text, it says Affiliation EDC Ally. And in most Transformers lore, EDC is the abbreviation for Earth Defense Command. This is their signature logo, and if you notice, this mystery woman who will be labeling Captain Fairborn is sporting a more modernized version of that logo. Considering the fact that the translation suggests she's in her early 30s, I'm guessing that this game may take place 20 years after this big shard landed in New York. 
In the leaked documents, the shard was labeled the Aegis, which is an ancient weapon the Autobots and Decepticons allegedly fought over and blew into pieces, ultimately leading into the events that transpired on Earth. You may have noticed a very peculiar looking display in the background of the EDC headquarters. If you look closely, you can see what looks to be the Aegis shards. According to the leaks, these things will come in the form of missions known as shard zones, which will be scattered throughout the world. We're talking locations such as Antarctica, the Saharian deserts, and obviously New York. And since each one of these locations are going to have distinctive terrain and weather conditions, the robots that inhabit them will feature certain aesthetics that will help them better adapt to those conditions, which we've seen in some of the images of characters such as Bumblebee, Optimus Prime, and Megatron. These in my opinion were some awesome designs which is a good sign that the art team are on the right track with this. Like not only are these guys going to be paying their respects to these iconic characters original designs, they're also going to be adding their own little spin to them to help them better fit into the different conditions associated with each shard zone. And yeah guys, I know a lot of you have been wondering how the other characters will look in this game, which you're in luck because we recently got a leak of what looks to be some of the Transformers or at least early concept arts for them. But before we look at them, I want to look at some of the ones that were seen in the leaked cutscenes we got a few weeks ago. The first one being Ratchet. As I mentioned in my initial trailer breakdown, he was seen rushing to the threat alongside Ironhide. You could just tell it was him based off of this ambulance truck. And this was further corroborated from the translations of a heads up display that mentions his name and suggests that he was critically damaged. You also see both vehicles veer off the road before the screen blacks out. And many have suspected that our favorite Autobot medic bit the bullet after this. And there have been some clues that kind of allude to that such as this key art where you can see the lower half of his body being covered in rubble and the virus, but thankfully he's alive and well later on in the game. During the leaked cutscenes we get a narration from him that sounds an awful like Jeffrey Combs who provided his voice for Ratchet in Transformers Prime and Robots in Disguise. But apparently this isn't necessarily him but a stand-in placeholder sound alike, but it's a good indication that we will be getting more veteran and voice actors who played these characters in the past because it's already been confirmed that Peter Cullen will be in this game and we hear someone who sounds awfully similar to that of Steve Bloom doing the voice of Starscream in the other leak cut scene. Like all these stand-ins were deliberately chosen to sound like and deliver similar cadences to the well-known actors who will ultimately return to their respective roles. But anyways, in this cutscene, it's Ratchet that gives us a general synopsis of what's going on in this game. He mentions that the Legion is a highly intelligent virus that can create monsters as well as infect other technology. He also mentions that he's weary of the Decepticons working alongside the Autobots in the same facility as the camera pans to Shockwave. And this moment just further emphasizes the element of choice. Because as the leaks suggest, you'll have to make choices that not only impact the story, but it kind of shows which factions you lean closer into. I think this cutscene showcased that brilliantly, especially with robots that seem to have similar skill sets working alongside the humans, but you can't quite determine if they have their own ulterior motives or not. Like using a completely unreadable character such as Shockwave is just genius, man. I'm hoping that the writers go all in with that aspect. For example, make it to where it looks like Shockwave is doing something nefarious and you have to choose whether to call him out on it or not. But if it turns out his intentions were righteous and if you pick the right action, you'll get rewarded with some kind of status effect on the battlefield. Like stuff such as that is going to make the game extremely immersive. But anyways guys, I wanted to point something out in regards to the overall aesthetics. I've noticed that most of the robots from the Autobot faction have these neon blue circles in their back. I remember seeing this on the back of Optimus Prime and assuming that they were nothing more than thrusters or something. But I'm starting to suspect that they're actually power cores or energon supplies that will play an integral role in reactivating the fallen robots. Because in certain scenes you see Ironhide bringing in a severely wounded Decepticon in the form of the female Seeker Slipstream. If you notice she seems to be bleeding out a liquid which is a similar color to the alleged power core as I mentioned earlier. It's also worth noting that Neon Blue has always been associated with Energon which is basically the lifeblood of the Cybertronians. Another thing I want to point out is during that scene where we see Ratchet and Ironhide get wrecked the translation reads power pack and Energon converter failing. I have a nagging suspicion that these readings are referring to the neon blue nodes in question that we see in the backs of characters like Optimus Prime and Ratchet. I also theorize that they'll be using these cores or power packs when testing how to combat the intelligent Legion virus. Because we see Ratchet and Shockwave test what looks to be an Energon cylinder along with remnants of the nano machines. Like they're probably thinking of a way to build up immunity against these things. And they're working alongside humans such as Delvin to aid in repairing and reactivating Transformers. 
But anyways, as mentioned, we got a leak or what looks to be a concept of more Transformers. And the first one we see is Starscream. As mentioned earlier, he was featured in the first leak cutscene we got and he will boast a very G1 accurate design accompanied with his Tia Prime voice. Mind you, the cutscenes are nothing more than motion picture still shots that aren't as detailed as the cinematics and leaked images we got for all these characters. But the design seen in this image looks fairly similar to what was seen in the leaked cutscene. And apparently he'll be an offensive type, which is what he should be since he's known to blindly issue attacks, especially if he feels the battle is in his favor. If you look underneath his photo, you see this progression bar, which is an indication that you'll be building a relationship with each individual bot, as the leaked files suggest. Or this could be how far the player has gotten with the missions associated with Starscream. Either way, I'm very much sold on what I'm seeing with him. Next up is Slipstream, which is another character we saw during the leaked cutscenes. The character is basically the female equivalent of Starscream and a retooling of Windblade. Based on this image, she looks very similar to the cutscene she appeared in, and this just further proves that this is in fact an official leak. Like everything seems to be lining up. Anyways, as the image suggests, she'll be a defense type. Next up, we see arguably my favorite design out of the bunch, Hot Rod. Like this dude just looks sick. A highly detailed and modernized design for the young and brash Autobot hothead himself. His vehicle mode features the signature exhaust pipes and flames and it looks like he's been modified to better work off road similar to Bumblebee. Everything just looks great on him. The only thing I'm not too sold on is him supposedly being a defense type. Like that doesn't really fit his style of combat at all. I'm hoping this was nothing more than a simple concept or maybe you can modify the Transformers to fit your desired playstyle. But moving on, the next character design we get is Soundwave. He's another one of those characters we saw in the cutscene and he looks really good. Like this design kind of reminds me of the one we got in the Council Chinese first person shooter Transformers Online game. It even has a similar alt mode which looks to be a highly armed jeep. Next up is Sunstreaker. He kind of puts me in the mind of the bumblebee design we got with the bars that are featured on his chest. I also noticed that he looks a little dirty which lets you know that he's been through some things. Judging by his huge tires on his vehicle mode, he's also going to specialize in off-road combat. Moving on, we get a better look at the Autobot Enforcer Ironhide. As pointed out earlier, he was featured in the leaked cutscene. I like how he has the giant blaster mounted at the top of his vehicle mode. This just lets you know that he's going to be an absolute powerhouse unit of a character. I feel like if there's ever an altercation between the Autobots and Decepticons, he'll be pitted against Soundwave because the two look fairly similar in terms of their vehicle choices. But anyways, the last bot we have is Wingblade, one of the newer Transformers in the franchise. I'm not the biggest fan of her character, but I can't lie, her design looks great. Like they all look really good. I can't wait to see what the actual in-game models look like though, because if you notice, the menu suggests that these are gallery images. I know some of you are probably wondering why it says October 2018 at the bottom of the screen. I have my own suspicions and theories about that. Considering the fact that this game has been in development for a few years, it could just be the date from when one of the developers was playtesting it. Or it could be a part of the game's timeline. But that's something I want to explore in another video. But until that video hits YouTube, I want to know what you guys think about this one. Are you liking the designs and overall theme? Or do you think these are fake images? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I'd appreciate it if you liked or disliked the video. It don't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed it, I ask that you share it on all the different social media platforms with your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG, aka The Random Black Gamer, signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. You're